Sandy Munro is going to be here in just a second. He's our monthly contributor. We are very lucky to have him, but this month we're having him on twice because our original conversation went on into a second topic. So I've already aired the first topic, which is why Tesla's build quality continues to be subpar. Some very interesting statements and claims from Sandy. So don't forget to watch that part if you haven't already. But now let's get to the part two. In this second part of our conversation, Sandy is going to talk about the two brand new factories that Tesla is building and that are coming online next year, one in Texas and one in Berlin. Obviously, this is a big deal. It will essentially double the number of factories that Tesla is operating as far as the actual factories. So right now we have one in Fremont and one in Shanghai. Obviously, the output will at least double and that is amazing. But what else can we expect from these two factories? And Sandy's got some very, very, very interesting ideas and expectations. So let's get to our conversation before that. As usual, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the Tesla community's accessory store. Use E4 Electric, the name of this channel, as a discount code for all of your purchases over $100. All right, without further ado, here's part two of my conversation with Sandy Munro. Um, let's move on to something that's really interesting to me and I think to a lot of my viewers. Okay. Uh, you, you already mentioned that Tesla is building a factory. I mean, they're building one in Texas, but they've already started on the one in Germany. And uh, this is sort of a, a new start. You can hire uh, a new managers, new people. The culture is different, especially in Germany, but I'm assuming in Texas as well. Um, what kind of improvements would you expect a manufacturer to do to an existing model, you know, because Model Y will be produced in Texas as well as now in California. What kind of improvements would you expect them to do to increase the either productivity or the build quality or both when you're building a new factory? The, um, the build quality should be dramatically better, dramatically. Like um, so different that, um, that people will rave over it. And if it's made in Germany and it's made by folks who absolutely know how to put a product together, if they hire the right people to, uh, to make this thing put together correctly, and they hire the right people to make sure that each part that's stamped is stamped properly, on and on and on. If they have that, then the, the difference will be enough that people might uh, say, I, I don't, I don't want a, an American build, I want a German build. And if I was Tesla, I might, I might consider doing that. In Texas, <clears throat> in Texas, the, um, um, you know, Texas is a big state and whatnot, but cars are not what they uh, build the most of down there. And uh, so they're going to have to import people. And hopefully, they will not import people from the Fremont plant. What they need to do is get guys who know how to build cars. So the Toyota factories or the... Um, or actually Chrysler factories or whatever. If they go in there and canvas and get those people who are Cracker Jacks at putting together high quality products and bring them to Texas, <clears throat> you'll, see, um, you'll see a dramatic difference between the Fremont plant and, and, the, uh, and the Texas plant. Um, I, can, I can give you an example. Um, uh, I was one of the guys that helped shut down Van Nuys because the quality of the build was horrible. I mean, absolutely a stinker. And uh, so we took the, F, the Camaro Firebird out of that plant and we put it in a little dinky town called St. Therese in Quebec. In Quebec. That, that change was unreal as far as, as far as the build quality, customer satisfaction, on and on and on. Um, moving sometimes makes a giant difference in the uh, in the way that the car is built and the attitude of the people in the factory. Every day, those guys, those guys at Saint Therese, when they came in, they, they some of them showed up in a suit and then changed into coveralls and went to work. And then because they were proud and happy to be working on this car, you know, a muscle car like a Camaro Firebird at the time was a big deal. So. I think that you're going to find something like that happening in Texas. I think what you're going to find is that 
that people that are coming to work there are going to be wanting to, uh, to do a really good job. And if they hire the right people to make sure that the dies are properly, you know, the stampings are perfect and the, uh, and the build quality is perfect and they go and they buy a new paint shop. I don't know who they're going to buy their paint shop, but, but to me, uh, that paint shop at, uh, in Fremont, that's got to go. That thing is a, that's rubbish. That's a piece of rubbish. Wow. So you're saying that uh, it's possible maybe in a year or two from now where I would buy a Tesla here in California, uh, let's say Model Y, and my friend would buy one in New York or in Texas, and their Tesla would be a, just a much better car compared to mine. Right. And this is what happened with GM, Ford, Chrysler, uh, for sure, those three. And the reason for that was because some cars were made in Mexico, some cars were made in the United States, and some cars were made in Canada. And people would open the door, and they'd look at the little label, and they'd find out where it was built. And the way it worked was Canada had the best builds, Mexico came in second, and the United States came in third. And people would buy that car based on where it went, where it came from. So at the end of the day, I can just tell you that, yes, that'll be precisely right. And people will look at the inside of the door to tell where it was built. Wow. And, and then that, uh, that's why some plants fail. Um, if, you look, if you look at, uh, it's easier to see in the big three, but uh, if you look and see what plants were closed and, and why, um, it means usually that they put one, in, one plant in one place and one plant in another. And, uh, and if the build quality is poor or something like that, at Ford, we closed lots of plants. GM, same thing. Closed a lot of plants because the, the quality wasn't at the other factory. And uh, quite frankly, a building is big nothing. It's, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's paid off. It, uh, you just run a bulldozer through it, and uh, uh, you, you just walk away. That's all. But, yes, that can happen will happen. Uh, let me ask you about this. There is a quality control department in every manufacturer, including Tesla. What happens there when people come to work and they examine a car that's coming out of the conveyor, uh, from the conveyor belt, I don't know, production line, and they see the panel gaps, they see potential issues with paint. Um, what do they do? How does that car pass the quality control? Does that mean that quality control people are not quality in themselves or do their standards are just lower because you know you can't just send every car back and never never produce any cars it depends on the company so um in some places if the guy who's in charge of quality control on the line sees something he doesn't like he presses the big red button that stops the assembly line that catches everybody's attention and when I was working with Dr. Deming and when I was working at Ford, <clears throat> that's what I told the uh, operators on the line. So for me, every operator uh, was, uh, was a quality control person. We did have a quality control department. <coughs> but at the end of the day, everybody was in charge of quality, everybody. So if, uh, if an assembly worker got a part and it wasn't right, or if an assembly operator was putting something together and the guy down the line or upstream from him um, uh, gave him something he didn't like, press the button, stop the line. I want to know now. I want to figure out how to fix it. I want to spank somebody or, or give somebody a big pat on the back. I, I don't want to have a bad build. Now, in the olden days, uh, everything was focused on how much production we can push out the door. Uh, that's what put um, the Japanese in number one position and put all the American companies back to zero. Nobody wanted to buy, nobody wanted to buy their car because what was the attitude? I'll just shove it out the door. The customer will figure it out. The customer will get it fixed. The customer will blah, blah. It was always that, that smug attitude that as long as they shoved it out and it was a good price, somebody would buy it. Uh, uh, today, that's not so true. Uh, today... Customers are kind of demanding, more demanding. And, and I think that Tesla's going to have to step it up a bit 
But I, it wouldn't surprise me at all as if, um, if the Texas plan is cranking out good quality products and uh, the gaps are better and things like that, people will be looking at the inside of the door, figuring out where they came from, and they'll buy that one, but they won't buy the one from Fremont. Now, I know we've been talking about the Model 3 and Model Y. Those are the new kids on the block, and people kind of yeah. forgotten about the Model S and Model X. But, you know, Model S has been around for now over seven, eight, year, eight years, right? Um, I should remember it because i one of the original 2012 owners. But um, are the production, are the build qualities in Model S and Model X still exist? I mean, I know everyone's having MCU issues right now and software and stuff like that. But as far as same old, you know, pa panel gaps, the pain issues and stuff like that, did Tesla figure out how to make those perfectly or those still having those issues? Okay, so the last um, S that I looked at was about um, a year and a half ago, right after the three, actually, a guy brought one in and he had lots of troubles and he wanted to know how he could get it all straightened around. He'd had it only for about six months and um, a very unhappy guy. And we can do, we can do tricks uh, to, to make a car, you know, uh, fit better. Uh, but in his case, we said, you know what, this is going to take a long time and it's going to cost you a lot of money to have an engineer fix it. So we took him down the road to, uh, to one of the body shops that's very close here that that does a really superb job. They also make prototype cars. We took them down there, and uh, that uh, that guy got, um, you know, he got a, he got his car looked fabulous when they got done with it. But but the thing that that was kind of amazing was that when I talked to the body shop and well, what did you find? What did you do? Well, we banged in this and we straightened that, and we are you kidding me? And the lock mechanism wasn't correct, and on and on and on. These kinds of changes or these kinds of things, that's not good. Um, that's, that's stuff that should have been corrected eons ago. And uh, I haven't seen, and the last Model Y or X I saw was um, even further back than that. And that thing really had issues, a lot of issues. But again, Tesla buyers are different than, uh, than other car buyers. They're, they're into it for lots of other reasons. Um, and uh, those other reasons uh, uh, make them, they look, they look the other way on some of these different, uh, different things that are, that are wrong with a car. So uh, it's a totally different kind of uh, buyer that, that buys a Tesla. All right. Now I have to, on a personal note, I have to say that, you know, last month uh, I not only had a birthday, but also I had a two year anniversary of moving to here in Sacramento. And I was very delighted to get a gift from you and your team. And it came in a jar, <laughs> which I was yeah. really excited because that's how my mom sends me my strawberry jam every every half a year. But there was something very different inside. Um, uh, it, it looks like it is signed by you as well. Tell, yeah. And it came with a certificate. <laughs> So tell us yes. a little bit about what this is, um, and, and people can actually buy it from you. I don't know if you have any yeah. left. I know there's a limited amount, so yeah. do tell, and thank you. There's not very many left, but, uh, but uh, we, wanted to, uh, we wanted to say thank you to guys like you uh, who uh, you know, helped us out. And uh, that is one of the uh, uh, 2170 batteries that came out of the Tesla Model Y. It's encased in epoxy. So uh, it'll never catch on fire or blow up or anything else like that. So, and we can mail it. When it's, uh, otherwise, we can't mail those things. They can also have either or both. Uh, you can sign it before it goes in. And I guess there's also a video that, that they can order. Uh, yeah, there's videos um, th that cost extra money <laughs> because it takes me away from doing my job. All right. Well, I, I won't make you sing a happy birthday, but I really appreciate the gift. And I will put a link <laughs> uh, for the rest of my audience to, to get it. I, I think it's really cool. Once again, thank you so much. I know you're busy. I'll let you go, but I will see you back here uh, next month. Uh, and you will. And uh, cheers, because really it's after five. <laughs> after five. So cheers. Yeah.
all right don't forget to pick one of these babies up from a sandy's store i put the link in the description of this video of course don't forget to subscribe to this channel because sandy is here every month i'm looking forward to all of your comments other than that see you guys next time and remember to stay charged